The strongest curse technique in JJK is Gojo Satoru's Limitless. The technique in itself is already very decent, but adding on the six size as well as Gojo's creativity and fighting style, the Limitless easily becomes the best curse technique, making Gojo stronger than anyone. In this video, we will talk about everything you need to know about the Limitless as well as what makes it so broken. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe, and sponsor at the end of the video. Let's get into it. The Limitless is the Gojo Clan innate curse technique. With the use of curse energy, this technique allows the user to have control of space on an atomic level. It possesses three standard forms. The first one is what we could call Satoru's main ability. It is the neutral limitless, also known as infinity. Infinity creates a curse energy barrier around the user. But this isn't just a regular barrier. It is just a distortion of space around the user. It is a finite amount of space but it can be divided indefinitely. In other words, as long as your speed can be divided, you will never reach the end of infinity. No matter how fast you can be, as long as division still applies, you will never get through. The only ways to get through is by using something that completely ignores infinity or something that can just disable curse energy like domain amplification or certain curse tools like the inverted spear of heaven then we have the second form curse technique labs blue this is the ability of attraction this can mainly be used in two ways attracting something or somebody towards the user or attracting them towards another specific point and by using his maximum output he can basically create a small black hole which allows him to attract things towards a specific point that isn't himself next is the third form curse technique reversal red. This is the ability to repel. A red has twice the amount of output of a blue, and Satoru always uses this ability as a beam that he shoots from his fingers, which deal great damage to his opponents. But there is also a non-standard form, a form that only the chosen ones are able to use. This is purple, the combination of blue and red. By combining curse technique laps and curse technique reversal, he creates an imaginary mass that just destroys everything in its way, which is Gojo's strongest ability outside of his domain expansion, his domain expansion being infinite void. This ability allows allows Satoru to flood his opponent's brain with an infinite amount of information, without giving them the ability to even process the information, forcing them to just be stuck and unable to do anything. And during that time period, they are very vulnerable to any of Gojo's attacks, which is the strongest domain expansion in the series. In terms of strength and refinement, it is tied with Tsukuna's domain Malevolent Shrine, but the sure hit effect is way better than Tsukuna's, which makes Gojo's domain so much better in my opinion. But this curse technique is very dangerous for the user, because not only it consumes a lot of curse energy, but it can also fry the user's brain. But this is when we start talking about the six eyes. The six eyes is also innate to the Gojo clan, but it is even more rare than the limitless itself. This basically gives the target the craziest eyesight possible, even allowing Gojo as a kid to see Toji when he was standing behind them, something that was supposed to be impossible for any human or sorcerer. It also allows you to see curse spirits and curse energy as a whole in a way more precise way than normal. And as stated by Shoko, Gojo can even pick up things like emotions. Basically, even if for one second you let your emotions show for a little bit he will be able to detect it. While all this is great, this isn't the reason why the 6 eyes is so overpowered. The 6 eyes maximizes the user curse energy efficiency. In Gojo's case, he barely burns any amount of curse energy, meaning that even though characters like Sukuna or Yuta have more curse energy than he does, he will still outlast them in the fight for the simple fact that he has the 6 eyes. With this, Gojo never had to worry about burning his curse energy, so even a technique that is so problematic because of curse energy efficiency becomes very easy to use. But Gojo can also use reverse curse technique on his brain consistently. Consistently. Gojo is consistently frying his brain by processing information, and performing reverse curse technique on it at all times allows him to maintain his brain in good shape, and that passive reverse curse technique doesn't cost anything, again because of the 6 eyes. While we are done talking about the abilities themselves, we still need to talk about how Gojo himself makes the ability more overpowered. Since his technique is very broken, you would think that he just gets carried by it, but he is actually the one that makes the technique even better than he already is. First let's start with the neutral infinity. After his awakening, Gojo became very good with the infinity. He was now able to keep it up at all times without getting tired like before. But he went as far as attributing different levels of threat to different objects. By using criteria like hardness, sharpness or more, he is able to decide what could represent a threat to him. Meaning that certain objects like for example an eraser will be able to go through, but a pointy object like a pencil wouldn't be able to go through. And of course, he can always adjust this whenever he needs to. What this means is that Gojo is invincible at all times, doesn't have to worry about activating or deactivating the barrier himself, doesn't have to worry about specific objects going through, he already knows what could be considered a threat to him. Then there is blue which is probably Gojo's favorite ability. Without really thinking about it, we don't realize that Gojo is always using blue. By his creativity alone, Gojo makes 
Crazy Blue an ability that allows him to be on creative mode. In reality, what allows Gojo to pull his opponents towards him is by erasing the space between him and the target. By applying this concept to everything else, things become very broken. By erasing the space between him and a certain destination, Gojo is able to teleport. By using Blue on his own fist, Gojo is able to make his punches way more powerful. The damage dealt by a punch is due to the impact. If you were to move in the same direction as a punch, you wouldn't take as much damage as if you didn't move. But Gojo actually pulls his opponent towards his fist as he punches him. That not only increases the impact, but if that wasn't enough, he uses the blue to actually crush his opponent's inside, dealing way more damage than what he was supposed to do. Even after using reverse curse technique, Raume could still feel the effect of a single Gojo punch, even though it was after a whole month. There are many more uses of blue but I'm not going to go over all of them. But just know that any situation in which you could apply the concept of erasing space, Gojo will be able to do it. The next ability is red, and in general, the way Gojo uses his ability is very simple. But during the Sukuna fight, Gojo was able to shoot a red around the building, giving the back shot to Sukuna before hitting him with a black flash. That was one of the most beautiful combos and strategies that I've seen in Jujutsu Kaisen. When I looked at Gojo and Sukuna, they seemed like the type of characters that were way too strong for that. To me, in these types of fights, there is no such thing as knocking somebody out. You either alive or you dead. Gojo managed to knock Sukuna out during the fight. His eyes even turned white and he got back to his senses right after when Gohuraga was already summoned. I just feel like this was very surprising because I did not expect that to happen. But now we need to talk about purple. Hollow purple is basically what you could call Gojo's ultimate ability. But the build up for this technique is way too long, which caused a lot of issues to Gojo during the fight against Sukuna because he knew that Sukuna wouldn't just allow him to charge and throw a purple at him. So Gojo had to get smarter. So when he crushed Agito with a blue, he kept the blue in the sky so high that Sukuna wouldn't even be able to see it. And later on, after putting the hands on him, he randomly shot a red at it. After shooting the red in the sky, Sukuna realized what he was doing. He wanted both the red and purple to collide to create a purple explosion. So this wouldn't be the usual one, which is also the reason why he ended up not killing Sukuna with this because he was way too far with the explosion. It was still a pretty interesting concept that almost got him to win the fight. Sukuna knew that getting hit by a point blank purple would have been fatal, but the distance was once again what saved them. But it doesn't take away from the fact that this was a crazy improvisation from Gojo's side. Gojo is also one of the only two people with Sukuna that we saw able to change the properties of the domain expansion. So during their multiple domain clashes, while Sukuna was always changing the effective area of his domain, Gojo was changing the size and the hardness of his barrier. He even made use of his prison room experience. He started by making his domain barrier bigger than Sukuna's barrierless domain, covering the whole 200 meters, then made his barrier smaller, basically making both barriers smaller, the size of a basketball. And since space is very compressed in that small area, Gojo was able to deal enough damage to Sukuna for his domain to break on its own. There were other examples of Gojo being very creative with his techniques, but I think I stated what was important. Now I just want to talk about how great this ability works for the power system. Gojo's infinity is so broken that it is often used in anime versus battles against opponents that are way stronger. But in the Jujutsu Kaisen verse, it is very easy to find a way to bypass this infinity. First, we have a domain expansion. Within a domain expansion, an attack doesn't exist until it creates contact with an opponent, meaning that infinity doesn't detect anything until Gojo is already hit, making his barrier completely useless. There is also the use of certain curse tools, curse tools that are able to disable curse energy, which is the way that Toji used to kill Gojo during the hidden inventory arc. But even though those are limited to certain sorcerers, you have a domain amplification that is way more common. And even though not every sorcerer can do it, to be fair, you wouldn't even be able to beat Gojo without his infinity if you weren't able to use domain amplification. From the information that we have, domain amplification isn't something so special. It is something that simply comes with experience. And a sorcerer that isn't even experienced enough to learn that wouldn't even be able to beat Gojo without his infinity. Meaning that in its own verse, there's still a way to balance out an ability like infinity. Even though you can carry Gojo a lot in versus battles against other verses, it is so much better for the writing because its own verse has all sorts of corner for this one ability. Proving once again that what makes Gojo the strongest isn't just his ability. If he was weak behind that barrier, he would have simply lost to Jogo and Hanami. The fact that Gojo is broken doesn't come from a simple ability. It comes from multiple layers of broken. His hand-to-hand -hand combat is broken. Curse energy usage and efficiency is broken because of the six eyes. Infinity is broken. His domain expansion is broken. And he has such great tactical intellect that it is very hard to even outsmart him, even for a character like Sukuna. Sukuna who even had the best counter against Gojo, who is Mahoraga from the Ten Shadows technique. Mahoraga is already pretty broken on its own, but when a genius like Sukuna is able to bring out his full potential and even learn from him, it becomes a huge problem that not even Gojo could handle. But that is what keeps a certain balance in the power system. Everything in the Jujutsu world has its counter.
corner. What makes her and characters broken is the characters themselves. For example, Gojo and Sukuna that are above everybody else. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Let me know which curse technique is the strongest in your opinion. Thanks for watching and peace. If you're interested in any sort of anime clothing or accessories, look no further than Anime Express. Whether you're looking for style, comfort or both, they got you covered. You can choose from all sorts of series going from Jujutsu Kaisen to Attack on Titan to Dragon Ball and way more. If you're interested, look at the link in my description and by using code GODLYOMEN10, you can get a 10% off on anything you buy. Enjoy your time and thanks for Anime Express for sponsoring this video.